Would you be able to jog from Oregon to Florida and back? A wolf from Oregon traveled at least that far. No, the radio-collared wolf called OR7 did not go to Disney World, but he did travel more than 4,500 miles after he left his birthplace. But why would a wolf leave its family and the only place it has ever lived to travel hundreds or even thousands of miles? This natural event in a wolf's life is called dispersal. Dispersal is when a wolf permanently leaves its birth pack with the intention of establishing a new territory and finding a mate to create a new pack or joining an existing pack. While some wolves choose to stay home, those that choose to disperse increase the chance that they will breed in the future. Dispersal is common for yearling males and females, meaning that most dispersing wolves are young and inexperienced. Wolves live by their feet, and their ability to travel long distances quickly is important to their survival. One young male disperser traveled 34 miles in 12 hours. That's averaging just under three miles per hour all day long. Another yearling male dispersed from the Chesnimnus pack. After crossing Interstate 84, he traveled 246 miles over the next nine days. He traveled 10 to 15 miles each day and 10 to 15 miles each night until he got to the foothills of the Cascades. There he found an old carcass to feed on and rested for a single day before moving on. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife has been monitoring wolves intensively since 2010. The biologists place radio collars on wolves to better understand their lives and movements. Some radio collars send the wolf's GPS location to a computer, allowing staff to see where the wolf has been. Those collars collect a location point at a specific time, some every few hours, some only once a day. Of course, wolves don't travel straight from one GPS point to the next. The path they travel is actually much longer. Dispersal is a dangerous time for a wolf. Dispersing wolves are more likely to die than wolves living in packs. OR-93 faced many dangers when he left the White River Pack in North Central Oregon and headed south. Imagine a wolf striking out alone. He has no idea what is over the next hill. The wolf encounters many physical obstacles, including fast-moving rivers, deep canyons, thick forests, and mountain ranges with deep snow and he must navigate it all without a map or compass. Wolves cannot see a state border when they cross it. However, crossing state borders can put wolves in more or less dangerous areas due to how wolves are managed in different states. A single wolf traveling through an unfamiliar landscape is more likely to be killed by predators, including cougars and even other wolves. Starvation can be an issue. Wolves are carnivores. Getting enough to eat without getting injured is always a challenge, but an even bigger problem for inexperienced young dispersers hunting alone. This may cause dispersing wolves to go hungry until they find dead animals they can scavenge, such as roadkill wildlife or livestock carcasses. Dispersers often travel long distances during the day, this increases the chances of vehicle collisions, being seen by people, or getting shot. Wolves may encounter human-built obstacles during their journey like highways, agricultural areas, and cities. OR-93 traveled within five miles of Bend, Reno, and Fresno and crossed major interstate highways. Many of the areas wolves travel through when dispersing are not suitable habitat to set up a territory, so they simply keep moving, searching for a forested area with elk and deer. Any of these challenges may prove fatal for a dispersing wolf and many die before they find a territory or mate. OR-93 was found dead after he was struck by a vehicle just 60 miles north of Los Angeles. Some dispersers do not risk traveling so far, 
a yearling female settled just outside the territory where she was born. She met up with a yearling male that had recently dispersed from his pack. He had traveled at least 650 miles to meet his mate just 60 miles from where he was born. Remember OR7's incredible 4,500 mile journey? He left Northeast Oregon, encountered many challenges, and ultimately, he was successful. The world watched his travels on the national news as he was the first wolf confirmed to return to California in almost 90 years. Books were written and movies were made describing his journey. His travels were amazing to us, but nothing special to wolves. That's just how they live. After searching for a year and a half, he finally found what he was looking for in southwestern Oregon, a suitable home and another long-distance disperser. OR7 and his new mate started the rogue pack and raised pups for the next six years. Dispersal is an innate drive for wolves, causing them to leave their birth pack and search for a new territory and mate. Dispersal happens in all wolf populations, allowing for healthy genetic exchange. In Oregon, we are watching wolves expand their range through this natural process. With their amazing abilities to travel long distances, find vacant habitat, and start new packs, we can expect the wolf population to expand into more areas.